<clears throat> so I'll, in, in the last segment here, I'll go through our um, alerting capability, uh, which is sort of a, a last but not least uh, type of situation. And what we wanted to build, Avi showed you kind of the back end for uh, the alerting, the streaming engine, um, and I'll show you the front end. Um, what we wanted to build was something just as flexible and useful as what is in the data explorer. Um, and to uh, kind of further that, we provide a pre-built library of alert policies that you can use as is. Could you, you blow it up a little bit? Yep. You can copy them into your uh, active set of policies with the copy button over here. Some of these are aimed at the DDoS detection use case, but there are others that are uh, aimed at detecting capacity issues or more general purpose network traffic anomalies. So these are the top 20 source ASNs that normally send me traffic and now something new is in the top 20 or something that was always previously in the top 20 has now gone away. Or these are the top 100 source desk slash 24 pairs that I normally see talking into my network. Today, there's some new subnet pair that I've never seen before talking to each other. That could be something worth investigating. Uh, if I go over to the active policies uh, and dig into how they're constructed, I'll pick this one as an example. This is a DDoS detection policy. Um, the general settings have some information like a name and a description. Um, the remaining tabs are the more interesting ones. So the data set tab defines which traffic this policy is going to look at. And so you can add filters just like in the data explorer. The, the filter section, um, wherever we put it, uh, defines which traffic this policy is going to look at. So I could add a filter saying, look only at traffic coming into the network, uh, only UDP traffic, um, only TCP traffic, only SINs, um, whatever I'm going to have this policy look at. Then I can add um, metrics and dimensions. So all of the traffic that matches that, we're going to slice it by destination IP. And in this case, we're going to measure bits per second and unique source IPs for each destination. Then uh, in the threshold section, I can configure um, how I'm going to compare the traffic that I'm currently seeing against the historical traffic. So the simplest is just a static threshold. Um, and in this case, we're going to raise an alarm if we get if any destination IP gets more than a gig of traffic from more than 10 unique source IPs. So the unique source IPs is an interesting filter because it eliminates spikes that might be caused just by a big file transfer or something. It's kind of enforcing that this is something that's uh, really distributed. The other comparison modes are uh, baseline values. So for uh, the top N, let's say the top 100 destinations, I can profile historically the normal traffic volume that they receive and then um, add a uh, baseline condition saying if any of them exceed their baseline by 200% or 300% uh, or whatever it is, um, then uh, that could be the basis of an alarm. The last comparison mode is um, change in top N. So in this case, rather than looking at the discrete traffic volume of each of those items, DEST IPs in this case, um, we're going to uh, look at the position of the top end. So um, historically, these have been the top 30 destinations. Um, if something is now in the top 30 that was never previously in the top 50 or the top 100, that, I, I want an alarm about that too. Below all the conditions, um, we have uh, a hold down timer type of functionality. So there might be some conditions where I don't want an alarm the very first time that threshold is crossed, but if it persists above the threshold, then notify me about it. Uh, and so that prevents uh, alarm noise from events that are so, so short-lived that you really couldn't take any action on them anyway. Uh, for each of those um, thresholds, we can configure notification channels. And uh, over in the main uh, alert window there, I can set notification channels um, to be email, syslog. We can make an outbound REST API call to a URL that you publish. So we can post all of the alarm detail uh, to your URL for you to process as you like. And then we also integrate with Slack and PagerDD. So you can get alarms in Slack, or we can notify your PagerDD instance.
on top of sending notifications, we can also take automatic mitigation actions. Uh, and these are most appropriate for DDoS alerts, although I suppose you could have uh, mitigation actions for other types of alarms as well. Uh, a built-in mitigation action that we have is route injection. So we can inject a slash 32 route for whatever destination is affected by the attack. You could drop traffic at your edge based on that. We can tag it with specific next hops and communities. Uh, or you could use that to divert the traffic to some type of packet capture appliance. But then we also integrate with um, A10 and Radware, who make uh, hardware mitigation appliances. We're integrated with their API. We can notify that appliance. They can inject a route to divert the traffic into the appliance, filter out the bad packets, and let the good ones uh, continue on to their destination. So you could advertise routes with third-party next hub to divert the traffic? In, it, so uh, we can advertise routes directly with third-party uh, next hops, but in the case of Radware and A10, we actually integrate with their API and we let them handle the route announcement. And often people have filters for that, so we set a community, they use a route map or whatever for it yes. to set the next hop based on us setting the community, so. Community 666. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I used to do AS of the beast. <laughs> Wasn't that... Didn't the Dizzen have 666? The, uh, the one of the DOD networks. It was ASN. Uh, and then there's also some settings here about um, when to apply the mitigation. So we can do it immediately when the alarm is raised or only after someone acknowledges the alarm. Uh, and then there's also an option to say, wait for a while for someone to acknowledge it, but if no one takes action, then start it automatically anyway. Uh, so DDoS is just, of course, one example. Um, depending on how I set my dimensions and filters, uh, this really is a general purpose network traffic anomaly detection engine. So if I look at uh, some active alarms that we have in this network right now, uh, there's a DDoS one here that I'll dig into in a second. But uh, there's also an alarm here about unusual low bits per second traffic from an ASN at a specific POP. So this policy profiles source ASNs per POP. And this alarm was raised because, um, it's a little bit cut off because of the resolution, but the, uh, at our New York City pop, um, traffic from uh, Edgecast, we expected uh, about 2.2 gigs, but only saw 1.3 gigs from Edgecast. And that was based on the historical volume of traffic that we saw from that ASN at that site. Uh, and I could dig into it to see if traffic from Edgecast just fell off a cliff or if it shifted over to another pop. Um, and those are incidents that networks want to know about. So if you normally get, you know, 20 gigs of traffic from Netflix at peak and you've optimized your network and your capacity to receive that at a specific set of pops and for whatever reason all the Netflix traffic starts coming in this other pop over here where you don't have adequate capacity, that's something that you want to know about right away. So we can uh, baseline an alarm on those type of network changes. Um, let me, if I go back in time here a little bit, I can find uh, maybe a unique... I think we're actually... We're, we're out of time? time. We All right. spoke too much nerd. I will let you... Uh, <laughs> I hope we didn't. Uh, <laughs> people ask questions, but if you have other questions, happy to take them. Um, next time we'll probably do a little bit more on our roadmap. Um, you know, my, my meta comment is I think it's really... Um, interesting how fast things are changing in the world. I think it's interesting how many different vendor type approaches there are. I still stand by my religion that traffic is truth and the rest layers around. Um, and, uh, you know, we try to, we're trying to grow in balance and so far we've been able to do well working with both enterprise and service providers. In the future it's a little bit more enterprise roadmap, especially as we're getting a lot of people that have security appliances that want to get this kind of visibility. People see Splunk. Uh, people that have Splunk, people that have, um, you know, Lanco. We generally start with the prod, but when the corporate security people get in, it's like, oh, I need this data, um, you know, and we're not going to get into the SIM world and all that, but um, uh, sometimes it's just helpful to know. And, and we see a lot of enterprise with a lot of 50 different solutions and they still don't catch things. So showing them that the network actually sees is, uh, is useful. So thank you.